on this whole thing. Joining me now to talk about it, some, we've got some heavyweight hitters, and ooh, heavyweight hitters on the set. Pete Hegseth, co-host of Fox and Friends Weekend and author of The Battle for the American Mind, Uprooting a Century of Miseducation, and Jason Chaffetz, former House Oversight Committee chair, Fox News contributor, and author of the new book, The Puppeteers, The People Who Control the People Who Control America. I don't know if I made the cut on that, the people that control everything. <laughs> You'll get it by the time you finish reading it. You'll love it. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, gentlemen, you saw my opening riff. I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, Jason, let me start with you. You are a former chairman of the Oversight Committee. Uh, what do you make of this? Uh, first of all, I loved your opening riff. I, I Thank wholeheartedly Thank agree you. with it. Uh, as the chairman of Oversight, you have jurisdiction on the National Archives. You also have it on the Federal Records Act. I know quite a bit about this. Mm -hmm. But when I issued duly issued subpoenas, when I issued preservation letters and they went to the IRS or we dealt with Hillary Clinton, the Department of Justice did absolutely nothing. And look at the contrast. Donald Trump's documents are there. And by the way, I thought it was very gratuitous for them to just put up photos. This is a facility that is protected by the United States Secret Service, mm -hmm. even though you may see a one in the bathroom. Well, um, OK, so they got tight spaces there. It's still protected by the United States Secret Service. Compare and contrast that to what happened in the case of the IRS and in the case of, of Hillary Clinton. These uh, documents are under subpoena and they destroyed them. Mm -hmm. And there was no consequence. Mm -hmm. When the FBI went in to go talk to Hillary Clinton about this, it was like tea and cookies because they didn't even take notes. And then you look, compare that to Donald Trump. Again, a facility protected by the United States Secret Service. They come with cameras. They come with guns ablazing. You see all these people with their, their guns out, like they think they're going to have some sort of battle. And then they start taking pictures and putting them out on the Internet. That is so fundamentally wrong and different. And that's the rub. It's the unequal application of justice. Yes, sir. Um, Pete Hexeth, you think it's a coincidence? That the day the Burisma documents got to the Hill, finally, they uh, started this uh, indictment and put it, made it public all of a sudden? Is that no, a I think you're probably right. I mean, it, it, on the same day, who knows? But ultimately, things get moved for reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this particular case, you know everybody over in, in the Biden White House is concerned about what they know they did mm -hmm. and ultimately whether the dots can be connected. Have they concealed the financial trails well enough that they can't connect those dots? That concern is very real. But if you watch any other network right now, it is wall to wall. They're probably not even taking commercial breaks. Donald Trump is going to prison. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what that's what they want to believe at this moment. And for me, it's the it's the speed and the focus. You look at how long it's taken to investigate Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. I mean, it's, it's on pace to be settled in 2040. Mm -hmm. uh, wh whereas with Donald Trump, the speed is is warp speed, the real operation warp and the focus. It's always him. It's any aspect of him. I, also, those pictures you showed, we don't know anything about those pictures. Those could have been as the I've been in that ballroom. A lot of people have. There are not boxes lining the stage of that ballroom on a regular yeah, I mean, basis. I didn't get so it, were so. those moved and taken a picture? I mean, right. we, we just don't know the context of it. That's the photo right there. We don't know the context of any of those. photos. And what are those records? Just because they're in boxes, they could be well, unclassified records. They could be notes. They could be. I mean, it's mm -hmm. anything that tells us next to nothing. Can sure. I just ask? Hang on, Jason. Hold whatever you're going to say. Um, I don't know if you read the Fox Digital account of the Burisma story and the FBI 1023. It is remarkable, and everybody should read this thing. But basically, $5 million for one Biden, $5 million for the other Biden, the Burisma executive told the confidential human source, according to a source familiar with the document, a pay-to-play scheme, okay, in order to get rid of this attorney general who is investigating Burisma. Now... I just say I, re, I re raise this again because this came out of the congressional when they got a chance to look at these FBI documents. By the way, there were lots of documents. It wasn't just one, as it turns out. Um, I just think that the non coincidence is very significant. This is a political play from the Justice Department, Merrick Garland, who takes his orders from Joe Biden. It's not a coincidence. And the evidence against Joe Biden and his bribery is um, mounting. You can That's connect all I the dots say. of the corruption with a crayon. 
I mean, it is, he's the vice president. It's his portfolio, Ukraine. His son is on the board, has no experience. They want a decision to be made, and magically $10 million shows up. And not to Joe directly, of course, but to family members and other right. holdings. And then the decision gets made. Then he goes to the Council on Foreign Relations and brags about how he yeah. fired the prosecutor. There you go. That's key. That's all, such all a that, key point. It's all such part a key of it. Point. If they wanted to build a case, they yes, would. Sir. Instead, they're covering yes, up if that Bragged about firing the guy. You're Correct. exactly right. I'm sorry, Jason. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. You're exactly right. Because, I mean, I don't think within hours of those documents being released, suddenly you have Jack Smith going out there and right. making the case within hours. Really? If you look through some of these pictures, one of the pictures is this spilled box with documents. It makes it look like it's sloppily handled. But if you actually zoom in on that picture and look at it, it's pictures of like newspapers and pictures of Donald Trump. There's nothing classified in there. There's nothing classified in there. Can you speak to, and, and you were oversight chairman, you're also lawyer. Can you speak to this issue? civil versus criminal. Mark Levin makes a very strong case that whatever, it's a civil case, not a criminal case, but they're trying to criminalize a civil case. It's a very similar tactic to the one used by Alvin Bragg in New York. What do you think? Well, they're invoking the Espionage Act, which is the, the most severe. That right? was going to be know? my second one, but yes, yeah, all uh, the peace. Yeah, so why are they going after uh, those types of things? It was not, it was Mark Levin, who's really smart on this stuff. Part of what he also talked about is if it was Ed Meese, he surmised, I mean, we're obviously guessing, the attorney general pick up the phone and call the, the, the you know, Donald Trump and say, right. hey, you got to turn over the, but none of that type of, they had been negotiating, they had been in there, they had taken some of these documents and they make a big deal about Donald Trump asking questions of his attorney. You're allowed to ask questions of your attorney. Really? There's not a crime for but doing But the whole that. National Archives business, the record keeping business. Yes. That's just. Here's a really important point. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. These are documents that are generated by computers. There is an argument to be said, they already have these documents. These are photocopies. They're, they're run off of a printer. Mm. You, we didn't take extra, it's not the only copy. We have extra copy. The president has the same security clearance as he did as president of the United States. Right, that's so key. It right is, there. he continues to have that security clearance. Guess who didn't have those same types of security clearances? The vice president. That's right. It wasn't continuously protected by the United and States Secret Service. And or the senator, Joe Biden. You can't take you a can't single document. You can't take that stuff outside of nope. the archives, and he did, and no one's saying anything about that. That is against the law. When you no go one's into saying a skiff, about that. When you go into a skiff, as a member of Congress, as the chairman, I would go in there. there. You can't bring your phone. You can't bring a piece of paper. You can't bring a pen. And what they do is there's a minder who turns the paper for you. Oh. Now, how Joe Biden pilfered and stole those classified documents, why aren't they asking those questions? Put it in his socks. Pete X. Seth, um, I still come back to the political point, which I believe that Biden and the Democratic Party will do anything, legal or illegal, to stop Donald Trump from becoming president. You're right, because when he ran the first time, he didn't know what he was looking for, and he was an admitted political novice uh, who energized a base. And when he got there, and before he got there, everyone went after him. Mm. Imagine Donald Trump in 2024 right. with what he knows, with what's left to be. He must be stopped from the view. He must be stopped. And the weapons they have right now are the full apparatus of the federal government. And they're going to be willing to use it and continue to use it. Here's the thing. It's going to boomerang on them. Mm. I, I, the Republicans will rally around the former president regardless of what nonsense indictments are thrown at him. They're making it more likely he'll be the nominee. And I... I don't see this being the deciding factor in a general election. There's a lot of things. The mess of the Joe Biden presidency will be laid bare. On the, yes, it, it, I mean, it's going to be a pocketbook kitchen table election, but this stuff will play some kind of role or in the primaries. But the thing is, Pete, I just want to follow up on it because I, I think, look, I know the guy really well. Obviously, I worked for him. Um, they fear him because he is such a strong fighter. He's a warrior. And you're right, the second time around, he'll know where the bodies are buried and he'll know exactly where to go. Uh, I think he's the only guy who will clean the stables. I call it his fightingness. I don't think, and, you know, I'm not demeaning others in the Republican primaries, a lot of smart guys in that, conservatives there and so forth. And I don't know what the outcome's going to be, but I think the reason Trump's ahead by 30 or 40 points is on this stuff and economic issues. He is the strong guy. The Democrats and the entrenched 
swamp bureaucracy fear the most because he's such a fighter. I couldn't say it better myself. You're exactly right. I mean, you want to look at the secret sauce of why he's up 30 points while he'll probably be up 40 in a week mm. is because this is a, this is a if 2016 was a break glass in case of war moment, this is we're still at war and and uh, we've got our Goliath and they're trying to take him down. Jason, um, can I just come back? Why or what are they doing with I mean, Biden's document thing has uh, some kind of special counsel. I know it's all under the thumb of, uh, of Merrick Garland, but what are they doing? We haven't heard a word. I think what Comer has done, and he's done an incredible job, um, is to actually get this unclassified document. Now has been seen by all the members on the oversight committee. But the bigger question isn't just the allegation, which is the most severe thing, right? Bribery of the vice mm -hmm. president of the United States mm -hmm. in exchange for public policy, which is on video of the president actually admitting that he did get this uh, pr prosecutor in, um, you know, prosecutor out. in Ukraine. From, from he the got him out. From his speech. At the yep. And using a billion dollars of U.S. taxpayer money to do that. Can they follow the money trail? The yeah. biggest question coming out of that committee is what did the FBI do to it? And the reason we know about this very specific 1023 document is because a whistleblower went to Senator Grassley and said, Senator, with, and Grassley is one of the best on, on yeah. all, I mean, he has the most experience, he's the best at this, came to him and said, Senator, they've done nothing with this. Yeah. This is why they went after this very specific document because they know they haven't run it to ground. And what about the documents, the stolen documents from by? I mean, come on, what, you guys. They still just, haven't recovered them. You, <laughs> it, I mean, Larry, what makes you think they're going to do anything about it? Well, that's, I mean, that's a, the dispiriting part about it. <laughs> is it can be laid out as plain as 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 the eye can see, but if they refuse to look at it, they, what does it matter? They found stuff in Chinatown in Washington D.C. Yeah, yeah. Really, it's stuff that never should have left the National Archives building in the first place. They're going after Trump, who, as you say, Trump still has all of his security clearances. He's got the Secret Service there. Who, is, who did he sell this to? To have espionage, you have to have two people. Right. Who, who's the second person that uh, gave him this espionage I, I just I don't understand it. Look, I mean, Mark Levin is exactly right here. And, Larry, I just can't get past both the IRS and Hillary Clinton destroyed documents that were under subpoena and they did nothing. They three, didn't care. 3,000, right? 3,000 3, emails. They destroyed and, and, and the vulnerability that clearly Hillary Clinton is the Secretary of State, and she has her own computer not running it through all the security parameters of the State Department. Nothing. Nope. Silence. Just no, just bad judgment. We're not bringing charges. That's, I, I mean, that, that's ultimately what it was. No motivation. No. Yep. No, no it's all attempt. a bunch of coincidences. Had nothing to do with the election. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with. I just think of it as cleaning out the stables. That is what Donald Trump will do. Yeah. They don't want it's that. Spades, yeah. All right, fellas, you're both great. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, Jason Chafe, it's Pete Hegseth. By the way, remember you can catch Pete Saturdays and Sundays from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Fox and Friends Weekend on Fox News.